Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, when I say prompt engineering, people think it is too technical, but it is a simple word of how well you are writing the prompt. It can be on ChatGPT itself, it can be in Python itself, or it can be anywhere. This the word prompt engineering is it is uh, not uh, too technical. It is just the way you write prompt in a. You can say why we use the word engineering because you are in. Uh, customizing the prompt according to what actually you want but it should be very 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 much detailed i had i have uh, i my prompts are generally 7 to 8 uh, sentences for doing simple simple tasks and i have created a template which i play around with a lot so and uh, that is helps me a lot in uh, generating very good ideas and content so now moving to sabiha she has also uh, uh, wants to add or comment or ask give her uh, suggestion or valuable insights see hey arshad good morning hi priya nice to meet you my question actually there is a question rather than a suggestion here so it would be an extension of uh, rabi's question here uh, so we saw a surge into the cloud technologies right uh, starting 2016 onwards like more and more people migrated to the cloud and i am asking a question more related to the architecture part of the solutions or the coding part so there are like millions of engineers now who are into this so what do you think uh, will be the future now like would people stop getting into the it field because there is too much of generated ai apps coming along or how is the scenario going to be like what is the scope and how should we shift our uh, careers to adapt to this more more into that very good question uh, so as priya you want me to take or you will um, take this no go ahead okay so uh, see the first thing is uh, uh, the reality is only few, as i told earlier on only the 1% of the world controls 90% of the wealth same, same situation right now we, we you know who are who are the top 3 players in the cloud who are controlling everything aws go gcp and uh, our edge microsoft uh, all these three they are going to make more and more business as more and more applications are going to be created we all know how much nvidia the nvidia is a company that has skyrocketed and benefited the most from this open ai boom uh, their stock prices have uh, tripled why because they are pro- providing the uh, my the uh, graphics card where these uh, open ai mo- the gpus the big gpus where the models have been run- are running so these are the companies that are going to benefit and what is the now the shift is what is going to happen more and more uh you can say uh cloud is going to be used why i'll give you an example is i have been using google collab for many years i never took a premium membership i did not take a paid account for a long time because 70 gb they had a ram which was working well enough for me but when i was trying to run falcon 40b it was not running and i had to take a paid membership of it was less i'm just giving an example i had to and i had $10 per month for getting the pro version of google collab to run falcon 40b model and this is only one case there are mil- and so google is going to earn billions because so many users are now going to take pro membership to run these models and they are going to build apps so these cloud companies are there is going to be a surge in demand there there is going to be a surge in the cloud is going to get because everything is now run on cloud we all know that and it is going to get more and more uh, you can say uh, more and more businesses are going to come because i mean in session also what we are hearing that there more and more people are now going to cloud there uh, are now everyone has already shifted to cloud and but now there is going to get more and more uh, usage of these technologies and uh, they are going to make lot of money and now for the career perspective the the career perspective is the same thing that i told you guys should again understand how these things work and if you are at the the other side 
how you can uh, we all know that this how these apis and all uh, how we can support and we all know about aws specifically that they are still not uh, having their own support of large language model and they are coming up with something in mostly in this event they are going to talk about it and uh, that because azure already has google already released aws will also do it very soon and they this the you can say the technical side the back uh, back end side of this how this uh, large language models are getting processed what are the new applications that can be used to help it uh, faster because now what is happening people will also accept expect the answers to come out quicker so now to be honest when i was using 80 gb ram uh, in falcon llb there was a little bit uh, delay i'm sure see i it's it's fine we can wait wait now for 2 minutes to get an output but later on people will not have that patience because everyone when they once they run their code they want output faster and faster so the processing power will get more and more faster and these clouds softwares will do it so and people who are actually helping them to do this faster the tech teams who are sitting on this uh, and building these uh, compilers will be, have to do something that is more faster maybe they have to use more of the distributed power they have to have more and more uh, you can say access or more and more the te- the and i'm sure maybe what we can do is and uh, maybe uh, priya can also help me answer quantum physics is also now quantum mechanics and quantum computing is also now coming al- along and i feel there is going to be a uh because as we know the processing power has to increase but there is a limit in the current uh, chips that we are using there is a limit of the processing power and quantum computing is one way that can increase the computing power to a exponential uh, levels and i am not an expert in quantum computing and, and i know any one of the speakers uh, listeners panel can correct me if i am wrong but i in the future that is going to help increase the computing power so technical knowledge uh in that side the chip designing side because we all know that there were lot of uh, uh problems in the supply chain of chips and only few companies that are controlling this chips market like companies like nvidia that has its chip company based in uh, taiwan and now they are trying to migrate it to us they are building big big factories in the us so i feel that in this hardware space there is going to be lots of requirements and people have to uh, people are uh, see we are talking about these technologies but the backbone of these technologies are at the end of the day microprocessors graphics cards servers and the, we have we need people to build these things so i feel that and also the back end team the cloud team the tech team to support all the infrastructure to run these um, uh, models quicker and faster to give a good user experience to the software uh, designers or the software team who's building applications so i feel that that uh, the whole end to end support system the, the supply chain completely from getting the chips producing uh, super fast chips till uh, the uh, get, getting the server ready for people to try out these new large language models to build their applications uh, that is there so that till that part i am telling you there is going to be lot of growth because on the above part right on this user part the software developer part there is already a big rush already millions of people are doing that but you know the the other side of the supply chain uh, what you are under telling because here everyone can't get in that you need to be technically strong in to become the part of the supply chain from the origin till that level where you are giving the uh, access for people to play around with these uh, tools and technologies so i hope uh, sabiha i answered your question i know it was a long answer but there is no right yeah. answer yeah. right now definitely so so definitely the hardware side of it and the designing side of it is going to have a sell but it has always been there according to me like even when the cloud technologies were coming up and even when there is so much competition even starting with small mobile phones to the mobile phones we have it at hand right now you know everything has been about the microprocessors and the engineering of these things 
and I think that is definitely going to see a surge. But uh, do uh, do discuss uh, more, you know, because uh, there is a lot of ambiguity about the career paths which we should be following for future generation, which would be more apt and uh, more rewarding in the longer run. So, any other diversions we could take, uh, that would be great to know as well. Thank you very much, yeah. Ashwin. This is yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you, Sabia. So the thing is, one thing I tell, one thing I tell people who ask me what to focus on, I focus on. I tell people don't focus on anything. Focus to learn. Focus to start having the uh, eagerness to learn quickly, to break uh, your uh, uh, the the norm that you have spent so many years to do learn something and uh, that adaptability that has to come, which is very very important because to be honest, things are changing so fast that uh, suppose you learned something one year back that is not relevant anymore. So the only thing that uh, right now is change is constant you have to keep uh, the thing is uh, people who are in school in schools and colleges they can think about going towards hardware side i right now i cannot go in the hardware side uh, people who are here uh, it is not easy to get into the hardware side uh, right now because we know uh, it requires you to be and uh, it was a different uh, set of experience, uh, right? It requires a different set of uh, learnings. Uh, but you people can do that as well, even if uh, they have, uh, they have, if they have the passion, if they have the eagerness, and they can do a course, and they can start uh, starting with the small, small things, small, small steps that are there. Uh, that is there. So now we have. I, I hope I answered Sir Sabiha's question. Uh, Thank you, Siddiqui Thank has you. come in the uh, speakers panel. You want to add some thoughts, uh, some things that are hi. there. Hi, guys. Hi, hi, Arisha. Thanks. Uh, so, if we're discussing about what we can do uh, in the current situation from a work work perspective, uh, if that is a topic that we are discussing then uh, I see a lot of opportunity for everybody in the field of AI or who are new to AI because every company will want us to implement that for their solutions, for their use cases, for their problems, right? And right now nobody knows how to implement that. So there is a gap of skill set there. Even if you have the technology, there is nobody who can implement, them, implement that for those guys. So you can focus on that if you want. So learn about AI, learn about what those things are, uh, how those things work and how we can integrate with different uh, businesses. So if you are in banking, how you can work for a bank to, to use these G GPT models uh, and, and large, language mo large language models for their use cases and so on and so forth. So that, would, that is what I would want to add here if, uh, if you are afraid that, you know, if AI has, is there, what will I do with my job? Thank you. Thank you, Siddiqui. I know Siddiqui for a long time and thank you for joining uh, this call. So the background of this call, uh, if you joined, is basically we, I, I am doing a lot of sessions about generative AI and uh, how uh, people can now, we know about generative AI. There's a lot of debate whether it is good, it is not good. So the, the thing is that we cannot do anything about it. It is already it is already there all over and there is no looking back it is a very good technology and now how you can upskill yourself and use this because we were saying that many of the jobs right are going to uh, get uh, changed right many of the jobs are going to get changed we already seeing in the service industries we already see like i am sure you are from the banking domain and the customer support systems right the customer support agents that were there earlier on 10 years back and now the numbers have reduced drastically i don't know any number i can give any industry standards but in the us when i was doing a project it has almost uh, by 66 percent uh, approximately it has reduced the, the number of customer sales agents that were there who were doing tech support as well as phone support now everything has moved towards yeah, sorry, you were saying something. Yeah, so 
uh, that happens with every technology. Like you know, uh, earlier you have you have a full team for customer support. Then IVR came into picture. IV, uh, intelligent IVR came into picture. So that intelligent IVR is now reducing the call volume. So there's less less uh, uh, call center people. Now, if AI uh, is being implemented in those call centers, obviously it will reduce the volume of uh, uh, call going to these call centers, and uh, there will be less requirement for the employees. It will have direct impact to those people uh, and, and similar uh, similar kind of domains. But then we have to think about alternatives where we can add value more. Yeah, correct, correct. So I was t- t- taking in that angle from the people side. For the companies, it is good. For the companies, it is good because it is giving, uh, it is saving costs. It is in- increasing their, uh, uh, you can say, quality of uh, this service. But for the people, so here we are talking about us. Uh, this, this we are talking about individuals who are uh, thinking about how it is going to affect them and how they can prepare themselves. And in that case, the main thing was, as you are saying, to the main thing is you have to learn. So those people now, now you are talking about uh, people who are. I am giving example because from you are from a bank customer service for a bank. He is being dealing with so many customer uh, calls for the last five six years. So he is the best person to sit with the uh, AI team or the product team and design the prompts because he will know what are the type of questions that people are asking. So that is a very very good practice which is uh, which because we know to be honest right now current situation people when we are chatting with a chatbot from banks it is very very pathetic sir, uh, customer service uh, we ask something they don't answer properly and finally we they connect to a customer call center this is for me personally this is the experience i don't know for the people on the call so what happens now uh, like we have mohammed also i want to uh, ask him he was required so uh, mohammed so my just suggestion is because this is i was working for one uh, one for use case how we can design good prompts so that the user experience is uh, there so first thing is first principle and first guidelines maybe if i may i'm taking the uh, before I give Mohammed the, the mic is you need to tell that you are interacting with the AI human most of the big companies do that but small companies are th- trying to tell that this is your person uh, this is uh, a person and this is not an AI bot but you should always tell that this is an AI bot and you should train the AI bot with the frequently asked questions of the company very nicely you should give them a very comprehensive frequently asked question and train that chatbot on that frequently asked questions and think of the way that they are going to ask the questions and here the agent who has lost his who was supposedly going to lose his job is going to sit with the expert advisor team because he has been doing it for five years and he is because to be honest when i am doing this prompt side there are so many possibilities of asking one question it can be in endless ways of a way person who is asking questions it can be a, a, in a short form it can be in a different tone positive tone negative tone neutral tone the different writing styles of the person how he is asking that so you have to think in that sense and from that experience and then so these are the skills i'm just giving an idea because i was i just told about customer uh, service people who are going to lose their jobs how they can use their skills to try to help companies design a very good chatbot because of their experiences in whatever domain there are so i hope i answered siddiqui and uh, anything else you want to add before i move on to mohammed sure uh, actually i'm working on the chatbot for our, our bank and i'm the product manager i just add i don't know uh, we are not uh, we are now in a situation wherein we don't have to work worry about the prompts itself because the, the customer can ask anything, any, anything. So uh, our model has to be so strong that it can create uh, hundreds of variations for the same question and understand what is being asked. And even in the back end, we don't have to train the FAQ. We just train the complete bank's data, uh, uh, all the content that we have for all products or services and everything. And then that can be trained in the back end on the large language models. And based on the current uh, uh, open AI uh, usage, usage, those uh, questions from customer can be answered without any training. 
So we don't have to write FAQs also. So I'm not sure if the customer support people will help here to create FAQs because it's not required anymore. Uh, you just have to create the knowledge base which can be trained in the backend or just once on the large language model and uh, any prompt which customer gives to the bot it will be answered accurately hmm. so one i just wanted to ask uh, Siddiqui, one question at, at, at any point isn't there a handoff um happening to a human agent anymore or is it going to be uh, resolved by the chatbot itself no so in any situation wherein uh the problem is that uh, I mean, the customer is facing some serious problem and uh, obviously the bot is there only to provide some answers for uh, generic questions. But if something serious has happened with the card or account or something, in, in that case obviously the bot cannot help. But then it has to be passed on to the agents where an actual implementation or execution has to be done. So you're, you're, uh, you've already deployed that and you're working on uh, it's uh, almost uh, in the phase of completion. Okay, can I ask what models you are, you are using? Model, uh, so it's it's based on GPT OpenAI only. Okay, okay. And are there, as a bank, you know, trying to understand, are there any security concerns about data, yes. data security and, yes. so and things like that? That is the main concern here, because uh, our, uh, the servers of, our, of our OpenAI is in Europe and America, in US, and uh, it's it's not allowed. The bank, everything has to be in UAE servers. So that is one major concern which is which we are facing, and uh, we are working with the the security teams to you know uh, understand if that can be passed on because obviously uh, we are in a situation uh, we are in a stage where AI is used by everybody, and everybody knows that this is a technology which. The bank has to move on and you know give exceptional approvals and all that. So uh, maybe we will work it out. So uh, this is this probably a question for Sadhana and also for for um, Mohammed Ashraf. Um, so Open AI Azure does have a UAE not the uh, not UAE instance uh, when you look at the cloud, and, and I don't know um, a Google uh, the AI director was also saying that they got instance in Qatar, they got instance. Uh, in the Middle East, um, they've got one in India, they've got one in Singapore, things like that. Uh, AWS, I know, uh, you know, has something of that sort. Uh, are we, do you think we are knowing we could, I mean, just a lot of institutions like banks and government are definitely depending on OpenAI and their servers are, are there on there uh, in the US. Uh, do you see, you know, when it comes to generative AI, what next? Uh, rightly, you know, would you see more hosting and more? Cloud solutions uh, being demanded within the region, in the country. So, uh, if my thought on this is, Priya, is this Azure instance is just as it is instance, right? It's a copy. It's just a copy. But at the end of the day, everything is uh, this is like a backups, right? So the thing is, uh, OpenAI is. Uh, the data that is coming is not specific to a particular region. It is the global data. So that is the thing that now, and to be honest, these answers will come with regulations. Uh, till now, there is no proper regulation and we also discussed about this. Uh, and uh, right now, whatever instances are happening in different regions are just a, a backups. Uh, and I think Sabiha from the cloud, she can be able to tell more in details. I, I don't know about AWS as of now, but Azure is a uh, is a is an instance. It's a backup of the uh, in this region as well. And uh, I think if Sadia can uh, answer this, if I want to add, I spoke to Microsoft partners. They said that, uh, that the US and Europe versions they they have more uh, larger infrastructure, and the same to replicate in UAE will take a lot lot of time. So that is the reason that they are not moving to UAE now. And so, this will be again. Yeah, thank you, uh, Sidiki. You are right in one point that some of the technologies have not trickled down to UAE yet. Because usually, you know, if we just follow the bit advanced countries like UK and the US, usually that, that is where it all starts. And then slowly it gets trickled down. So usually the government part 
uh, what they do is they want to keep their data localized. That is the only, uh, uh, you know, only point where they want to keep it separate and they feel it is secure. Even though we can manage cloud security uh, in various aspects, like any other public sector or private sector, sorry, private sector uh, applications, if you see, they run worldwide. You know, they are not localized to a particular part, but uh, usually government uh, agency or uh, public sector, they like to keep all the data localized and they feel more secure about it. Uh, I'm talking more about the service industry here which uh, Mohammed was talking about. Um, I would like to add that I also work with Amazon Connect. Okay, I work with Amazon Connect, it's like a call center as a service and what more is this AI adding to something like Alexa, uh, like we have, we already have Alexa powered bots which has already reduced the agent, the call center agent's interaction by more than 50%. Like this is tried and tested all across uh, usually the public sector US call centers with, uh, with which I work. So we usually uh, put in an AI bot to take in most of the questions and answer them and we even provide the OTP to their phone numbers and uh, you know verify their verify the security even for banking applications I'm talking about. So all this is already done. The agent doesn't have to be even involved in any of this. And even the voice ID recognition has been enabled now. So it's like a biometric print that also is already there. And on top of that, now this uh, generative AI. So what more can it add? That would be my question as well. Uh, is there anything else I should add about? <laughs> Your, no comments. Oh. So, uh, Sabiha, uh, like that, uh, I, see the thing is, uh, this, uh, the word you use, correct, automation is the correct thing. Uh, that everyone should think about at least I'm talking about the business side not from the individual side so how you can uh, you can improve the customer journey of, and improve the product features according to the technology that you have and any like if if that particular part is getting solved by uh, it can be a simple thing right whatever you mentioned does not require uh, generative AI models. It requires simple automation. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm yeah. surprised. Like, uh, yeah, when we are thinking about what more, like there is already content management in something called as Amazon Connect Wisdom. If you would like to say, it's just uh, like a bunch of content. Like you're saying, you have a website and you have all that data, okay. and you're asking questions. I will tell you. It's, yeah. So see, because, because you see, you're talking about big companies like AWS, Google, uh, these companies already have the technology like suppose suppose I uh, me as an individual suppose I wanted to build my own chatbot two years ago my own like my own chatbot not using AWS services not using Azure services not using Google call, uh, dialogue flow services as an individual if I wanted to build a chatbot to one year back two years back it had have taken me years so these technologies have, are not for big companies it is not benefiting so much compared to the uh, it is benefiting the people like us who wants to build something very fast on our own using these technologies so you are getting what i am trying to say right yeah so th what that is what this generative ai has done if i can tell in short it has democratized ai yes siddiq go ahead yes so uh, uh, to your point if if you are seeing that uh, generative ai is not uh, help, helpful that much uh, and we can just use those FAQs and, and prompts uh, uh, like we used to do two years back. Uh, if, 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 we, if we talk about two years back uh, and uh, I mean still before this AI being popularized uh, six months back, uh, we were using on a few prompts and few mm -hmm. FAQs as content, Sorry. getting those answers only from the bot and in most of the time bot will say I don't know. I, can't help. I'm only trained for this much of to answer, right? 
Uh, yes, sir, sir, I am sorry, sorry, I, I am not talking about, uh, you see, you are not a product company, you are not a uh, technology company. I was only talking about the top three technology companies here, sorry, uh, to it was because she was asking specific to AWS. Because AWS okay. already you see that to be honest, when I chatted with AWS customer support for my billing issues, uh, it was already very advanced as what uh, she is mentioning uh, the experience these technology companies they spend all their money in these developments right google uh, see google uh, aws azure their chatbots and their uh, all their services are already very very good quality i am talking about those we are not a like your your, your bank or we are not a product company you, uh, a technology company so and right. so your te- and uh, that don't uh, the angle was only for these top three companies that i was saying and uh, we when i say users of ai like like banks also now uh, they are going to get more and more better because they can also now adapt adapt to these technologies quicker and faster and uh, that is it now sorry to uh, thug i now i think uh, mohammed was waiting patiently for a long time and he uh, i wanted to also give him the opportunity to to give his valuable inputs as well in this topic yeah thanks thanks ashwat and the other speakers really that was very insightful uh, like this is a, like a, uh, no doubt like ai is a buzzword these days and uh, there is a question burning question like uh, how safe my job is in this era of ai okay so i remember like uh, uh, almost 10 years back when we were getting training on informatica that's a very famous tool on etl creating etl mappings and all those things so we were we were, we were thinking the same thing because informatica is a very smart tool in the etl world and it can create mappings and all those things so we were thinking that oh this is a very smart tool and this may eat the job of etl developers and the sql developers right but then we have seen that that that, that has created a lot of new job opportunities for the ETL developer and SQL developer. So similarly, any new technology, like if you go back to 20, 30 years back, when we were using typewriter, then uh, then we have seen the uh, computer and all this new technology. So that has given birth to new job opportunities. So I don't think this AI will eat our jobs. But yes, we have to understand it. This will give birth to new job opportunities in the market because we have the flexible brain, right? And the artificial intelligence cannot replace us. But yes, we have to start learning the artificial intelligence and where we can use it. We have to find the applications of it in our day-to-day lives. So we have to get away from our comfort zone. But I don't think it will replace because still this AI is not mature. Still a lot of concerns are there. I, I uh, like a couple of days back, I was writing a SQL query and I just checked that whether uh, this chat GPT can give me the correct query. But that was the wrong query. And even the chat GPT, they have mentioned that is that you might face some uh, some of the data may not be correct. So you cannot totally rely on that, right? And and then you have still a lot of uh, security concerns. So so from my understanding, we should not be bothered about that. That what will happen to get a scare. But we should work on this to understand that how this AI works. So we should learn the computational model and the machine learning algorithms, what we're using inside this. So that is what how I, I understand. So that there's thought of sharing that. So thank you. Ashur. That's amazing because I know that we as humans, we have the brains to uh, adapt to anything. And this is a very hopeful answer. And you know, like we say, life always finds a way, right? <laughs> that yeah. is great. Okay, I think this is very important. For, I mean, it's a great point, uh, juncture to bring it this point, right? Uh, generative AI, what next? So we are, we, we just heard uh, uh, Mohammed saying that you know uh, AI's brain or whatever is not as flexible uh, as human beings. Um, so is the God mode or the Copilot or the Auto GPT or the super uh, artificial intelligence that people are talking about? Uh, does that, should that scare us? Is that the next thing for generative AI? And will that, um, does that have the capability to replace or kind of, you know, um, let's say replace human beings? Because I was also this morning listening coincidentally to what, uh, uh, you know, Jeffrey Henderson was saying uh, that a human, human brain can make only 100 uh, trillion collections or something. And then, uh, generative AI or artificial intelligence does have the ability doing that, like 300 trillion connections. So, 
Uh, that shows the limit of what human brain is capable of doing and precisely why uh, a human uh, could not be, or a master, master player, chess master, could not defeat a computer or an artificial intelligence chess player. Because it's at any given point in time, it's looking at so many combinations and possibilities which the human mind cannot uh, come up with at any given point in time. So, um, you know, what next is a super intelligent, super artificial intelligence, uh, or the uh, you know, God mode? The next big thing that we should be worried about. Can you see? Yeah, go ahead, see, Go ahead. Mas, mas. Yeah, hi. So, uh, I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's a great question, and I think everybody is afraid of these things happening around. But uh, as we see, um, I think Muhammad has pointed out correctly. Uh, as human is progressing every day, I mean every year, every decade, there has been new technologies appearing and uh, human is also evolving. Uh, I would always take this opportunity as a very positive note for us, uh, for humans, because uh, AI will be only enabling humans to perform their daily lives uh, in a more uh, profound and more reproductive manner. And uh, I'm sure uh, we, we will be using AI positively, not negatively. Uh, in that situation, uh, all these companies will be using AI in their daily routines. Uh, take example of banking or, or e-commerce or, or uh, healthcare. And uh, they will be only enabling and helping us. And humans will be uh, getting a lot of help and support from AI. And uh, we will be doing some other new works, I'm sure, uh, I don't know what will be that, that new work, but definitely it will be a new work. Like he said that Informatica has created new jobs and every new technology creates new jobs. So we'll be having new jobs to work on, new problem statements to work on. And I don't see any negative point uh, from AI at this point of time, unless AI is being used for some unethical or negative uh, work which can harm people or harm society. Uh, so, uh, uh, regarding this, my thoughts are, uh, right now, I am also not thinking so much negative, but uh, there are a lot of, nowadays, there are a lot of talks happening, right? My YouTube feed is completely filled with these topics that are there. Uh, there are two views, two sides of every coin. So, people are talking about this why did uh, everyone sign the letter to, to stop this uh, uh, the open ai's uh, work it was not and no one expected it to stop also because i've seen a lot of interviews also but it, the thing is for the government to start talking about these things uh, for the government to have this in their mind that how this is going to change there are a lot of things that are there i don't want to discuss and this call and I, and i you all know about me that I always try to focus about the positive things and how we can learn from it and how we as an individual can empower more than what businesses can do. Businesses are going to always think about cost. They are always going to think about uh, automation. But as a then and I am focused as a uh, you can say as a AI community builder focused on individuals. So it is uh, so we, and this will cause a little bit uneasiness in the next few years i i also don't have a clear roadmap as siddiqui also told we don't know what type of jobs are going to persist but we know that any manual job that were happening on a computer any manual job that were happening is going to be cut drastically by 50 percent and already we are seeing that and many of my friends who have businesses who had a marketing content team of 10 people they have slashed it to two people and that is the reality it is it is going to happen we are we as an individual we have to if plan ourselves we have to upskill we have to learn these technologies we have to uh, become uh, more aware of these things and start implementing it there is no other go if we are in uh, tech jobs if we are already doing uh, well that is good but people who are at the who are whose 80% of the job is manual job 
which ha which is can be automated and now before it was not easy for companies to automate things they need to they needed to spend x dollars or maybe high dollars to do that to auto but now you can automate things very very easily at very very less cost so more and more companies are going to automate things that is the there is no uh, hidden fact about that and when they are going to automate we we know who are going to get affected because the big companies have already done that the mnc's the have already automated and uh, now the smes and the mid 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 size companies are going to do that and we all know where are all the employees uh, going to uh, uh, get affected and so the now individuals have to take up on this and they have to learn they have to upskill they have to learn uh, and and there's no correct answer of what type of jobs i also don't have a clarity uh, what type of jobs are going to get but tech jobs are going to be more and more see the thing is programming skill is very very important people say i am from non tech background that word is going to go away everyone has to become in, has to be in the tech background they know, they need to know coding coding is an art coding the languages that you write right if i have been doing coding for 15 16 years it is an art it is a logic building is an art you if you know that logic building and if you have done one programming language end to end so i uh, did dot net so that using those logics i could easily start working in sas then r and now python so you see right i was there was a tool called sas that we used 8 years back now i'm not using that for the so many years r also i have stopped using now i'm only using python and god knows how long python will be there people are talking about mojo julia and all those things but that is fine but if you know how to build a program if you know that logic building programming that if you are good in programming in any language you can pick up the language very quickly so that is my thoughts about this so one thing is that you need to be you don't need to be scared of programming you have to pick up one language and you have to be very good at it if you are very good at one language you can pick up any other language very quickly that is my thoughts and there is no shortcut to learning programming right there is no shortcut you if you start using chat gpt to, to learn programming then you are gone you will never be able to learn because chat gpt will just give you a quick solution but you don't know how to build logics you don't know how to building logics building understanding data structure algorithms understanding the conditional statements understanding functions understanding class the uh, all these things you need to practice you need to get your hands dirty then only you will learn because many of my students now to be honest it's a very sad thing my academy after the chat gpt release has gone less than you can say 8 70 to 80% there is a registration has reduced because now everyone is saying why should i learn python why should i learn sql if everything is available at a click of a button you do that you will uh, you do that you will never learn it you will you can just you will see as uh, mohammed he is so experienced in sql how can he confidently tell that the sql that he has got is wrong because he has done his work he is expert in sql he has learned he has spent hours to uh, uh, months and years to learn sql that's why he can tell that sql that output of these tools are wrong but if a new person who is learning and he believes that this is what is the output and use that code in the production suppose what is going to happen if an engineer is going to without knowing sql is going to put the sql code in production of chat gpt it is going to crash the whole system and so those are the uh, problems that i feel is happening specifically in the academy space that i feel is and because people these tools are going to make people lazy and that is what technology does to be honest you should not become lazy i to be honest if you start becoming lazy and if you think these tools like chat gpt and whatever tools are there for your convenience if you have that mindset then you are not going to go anywhere that is what i tell many of my students i know this is not for the people on the speaker panel because you are all experienced but this is what i am seeing the the uh, questions that are coming for people why should i learn python and sql if it is so easily available every code comes up so easily why should i know the syntax why should i know indentation in python there is something called indentation we have to put an indentation in after every function now people don't even know about that because they are not writing the code they are just copy pasting the code 
so it's very sad reality that's why uh, for me it's uh, the mentality change is very important uh, that's why i do such awareness sessions i know leaders people who are in the call are experienced people and they understand this but 80% of the people i talk to at the daily level they don't understand this and uh, the academy the teachers i do lot of talks and meetings with the teachers also in the ue ai uh, coders hq events and all those things and this is a very very big challenge of the young people who are learning at this age how it is going to change the way it is they are, they are learning because you cannot programming is not you need people who are programmers will uh, agree to me programming takes time programming takes time to learn and to be honest i after uh, almost 18 years of coding i am also not a good coder i admit that i am not a good coder because it is not easy you have to keep practicing it is there are thousands and 2000 lines of codes in production right and there are so many variations so many classes so many functions how to get everything together how to use it's not easy once you have written it yourself once you and you have done it yourself then only you can identify the bug you can identify what is happening so that is the you need to do the hard work there is no shortcuts so that is my that before i end any more suggestions any more the call got extended i know it's a very passionate subject for me but thank you everyone uh, it was very nice for five of the experts to join and share their experience and thoughts and i'm sure many people who are listening uh, could benefit from this and understand the importance of doing the hard work and learning about these technologies properly any end thoughts before i end the call Uh, just one uh, one suggestion, Ashit. Uh, this is really very helpful. So thanks for organizing this, and I will suggest that please keep on scheduling this kind of session. Like we can share our thoughts on this AI. So this is really helpful when we when we discuss on a particular topic. Thanks a lot for sharing. Thank you, Mohammed. I just wanted uh, since since Aliha is here, nothing related to generative AI part. Could you please talk to your uh, API team and make sure that it's it's made better please if you can do that uh, the amazon api platform people like us use uh, there's a lot of room for improvement in that okay <laughs> well i'm i'm not directly with aws but then this is, this is something which can be so can you be more a little bit more specific here there yeah we will connect offline sure sir it was it was wonderful talking to all of you thank you sir for doing this Nice meeting you, Priya, Siddiqui, and Mohammad, uh, and so, all the participants here. Thank you very so, much. So, uh, uh, guys, if you are agreeing with me, like I can keep this uh, recurrent weekly, maybe every Sunday, same time. If we will, I will just see if people are agreeing to join, because people generally Sundays they don't want to. But this is a very, uh, you can say, light event. There is not so much technical discussion. It is just sharing our thoughts. and our journey and our experience with these uh, tools and technologies so i think i will keep a recurrent meeting i will just discuss with you guys who have attended as a speaker offline and maybe set a time and sunday is better saturday also we can see if a people are interested on saturday we can do on a saturday also i will just take and ask you guys your thoughts and then we can schedule a one a audio event weekly uh, so this is a very good uh, uh, thing from linkedin Uh, where we can talk to each other and uh, like something like a clubhouse and uh, good to have such events and uh, people come in and talk and share about their journey and uh, i also learned a lot from uh, siddiqui i i should call i should call you masrur or siddiqui i am reckon because you are showing in linkedin siddiqui sure. masrur yeah, okay okay <laughs> cool cool okay masrur thank you very much thank you sabiha thank you priya thank you uh, tanveer and uh, Uh, see you next week and have a great uh, sunday as well yeah thank you guys thank you so much thank you